about two months ago, I know it says one month, but this is right around All-Star break. I made a video grading every NBA star season so far. And as we come to a close to this NBA season, I believe it is time. It is time to make the end of the season version of this video. Grading every NBA star season. Um, ever since then, there have definitely been some grade changes. A lot has probably stayed the same. Um, but let's just get straight into it. Let's start off on the Western Conference this time. I believe we started with the Eastern Conference last time. I am just going to be grading the stars. If I miss fringe stars and people y'all think are stars, man, hey, let me know in the comment section down below what their grade should have been. But nevertheless, let's start off with the Denver Nuggets. Nikola Jokic got to be an A+, plus, right? I think um, any MVP caliber season got to be an A+, plus, especially... If you can make a good argument that he's probably gonna win the award, so when you got the best seat, when you got the best individual season in the league, or at least arguably, a a at worst, like for real, for real. But Nikola Jokic this season, twenty six to twenty seven points, twelve rebounds, nine assists, giving you a block, giving you a steal, right? Shooting fifty eight, thirty six, eighty two, just phenomenal numbers from. Uh, what many believe is the best player in the NBA, and he proved it throughout the whole season in so many ways, from uh, impact on winning from a statistical standpoint, from a moment standpoint. Nicole, Nicole Jokic is just that guy, you know what I'm saying? Um, his co-star, Jamal Murray, averaged 21-7 and seven this season, along with four rebounds. He did not have his healthiest season, um, only playing 57 games which I do feel like is underrated when it comes to, um, you know, the, the MVP case and all of that. But, yeah, he missed, assuming he plays 59 games, he missed roughly 20 games a season, 20 to 23 games a season. Um, I am going to give him a, I'm going to give him a B. I'm going to give him a B. I think we know what Jamal Murray is all about. I think uh, Jamal Murray is a playoff riser. So that's really where he makes a name for himself. Um, but I'm not going to lie, after what I saw in the playoffs last season, I thought it was a little bit of a come out party to say, yo, Jamal Murray is here and here to, he is here to stay. Um, from a night in, night out basis, I did expect a little bit, uh, something along the lines of 23 to 24 points a game, maybe even seven to eight assists from one Jamal Murray. Um, but nevertheless, we all know Jamal, he's still a very effective player, very important player to that team. Not to take away from, you know, his abilities, but... Um, I'm going to give him a B. I'm going to give him a B right around there. Um, let's move on. Shout out to MPJ. Shout out to Aaron Gordon as well. Very impactful players for the Denver Nuggets. If you want to make a case to stars, be my guest. I am not going to be that guy this video. Next up, the two seed, Oklahoma City Thunder. SGA, again, got to be an A-plus season. MVP caliber season. One of the four main figures within the MVP race. And let me just say right now, th those four are Jokic, Giannis, Luka, and SGA. Um, obviously, Embiid would have been in that conversation, but didn't play enough games. Tatum, mm, the stats aren't good enough. I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, uh, SGA this season finishes with 36-6 and six on insane efficiency, dog. Insane efficiency, 54-37-87. Um, led the league in steals for a majority of the season. I don't know who's actually leading the league in steals now, but I just remember every time I went to SGA's player card, this, this, this was in bold <laughs> for a majority of the season. But nevertheless, giving you two-way play, um, leader of a team that's about to win 56, 57 games, one of the best records in the league, top four record in the league, um, just uber efficient, uber clutch, one of the best playmakers in the league. Um, while still only being 25, um, got to give that guy an A-plus season. He's become one of my favorite players in the league, dog. I, I used to be a doubter when it came, came to SGA because not too long ago, like, SGA used to be in the class with, like, Darius Garland and them. You know what I'm saying? SGA has definitely separated himself from the crowd. He is he is one of them ones, okay? Um, if we want to talk about Chet and J-Dub as stars as well, I think Chet for a rookie season, I am going to give him a solid A- minus to an A. Um, you know, there was a point in time of the season where Chet and uh, Chet and Vic debates for rookie of the year were a thing. And truth be told, bro, the 
the arguments that motherfuckers had in the beginning of the season honestly still stand still. You know, a lot of people were talking about Chet's impact on winning. A lot of people were talking about Chet's efficiency um, and just him being a better scorer at this time while still giving you great defensive impact. And quite honest, a lot of those things are still the same. Um, but, you know, volume at some point in those crazy numbers that Vic had just had to overtake. But nevertheless, it's not a rookie year conversation. Chet for a rookie, giving you 17 and 8 with two blocks on great efficiency. Playing 80 games as well. But that's a, that's an A season from a rookie. Uh, J-Dub as well. Is this his second season? I believe this is his second season. Or second or third? Yep, second season in the league. Um... Upped his production up to 19, 5, and 4. Um, crazy efficient as well. Um, I would say he is their second best um, perimeter player while being a really de uh, versatile defender as well. Just just an all-around um, versatile player. I think J-Dub is, is the embodiment of some of the most valuable players in the league, right? Uh, Two-way wings, versatile defenders, um, can score from all three levels, can play make, can defend. Like, J-Dub is one of them ones. So, shout-out to J-Dub. I'm going to give him a shout-out there real quick. Let's go to the Los Angeles Clippers. Wait, did we miss the Timberwolves? Oh, my God. I skipped over the Timberwolves. This is crazy. Um, Anthony Edwards finishes the season off roughly around 26-5-5. 46, 36, 83 splits. I am going to give Anthony Edwards a B plus to an A minus. B plus to an A minus. I think Anthony Edwards is one of those. I, I Honestly, I felt like AE had the capability of putting up better numbers than this. And maybe that's just something that's going to come with time, which is fine. Anthony Edwards is still a really young player in this league. He doesn't have to have those monster numbers out the gate. And he still had a phenomenal season regardless. I think Anthony Edwards, honestly, he did it at the end of last season. But this season specifically, I think, truly, he established himself as the guy for this team. He is the cornerstone for this team. Um, he is also the most valuable perimeter player on this team. You could probably say he's the best player on this team, on a team that's won 56 and 57 games. So I cannot take that away from him. Um, I just feel like, um, he, he, he could have put up better numbers in my opinion. He could have put up a, a little bit better in my opinion, a little bit higher volume, but it may be one of those cases where like, you know, he's, he's playing within the system. He's doing what's needed to win. And if that means not putting up 30 shots a night, he's doing what he needs to do to win. You know what I'm saying? Um, he's also been good defensively, um, plus defender. Anthony Edwards has had a phenomenal season. So, I, you know, y'all might want... He's an A. He's an A+. Plus. B+, plus with A- minus is still a really good season. Um, Rudy Gobert, defensive player of the year candidate. I feel like he will end up actually winning the award over Vic this year. Um, proved a lot of people wrong. Specifically how he would fit to this team, his impact on this team. And uh, just reminded people exactly what made Rudy Gobert a already three-time defensive player of the year. Yeah, three-time defensive player of the year. He's about to win his fourth one. Um, 14 points, 13 rebounds, two blocks. A lob threat on the offensive end. One of the best rebounders in the league. Um, one of the best shot blockers in the league. When you get into the paint, you run the fuck out of there. I know Gil wanted to say that only works with Vic, but nah, I've watched Timberwolves games. <laughs> Rudy Gobert has that same exact fucking effect, okay? Um, yeah, man. Shout out to Rudy Gobert. I'm going to give him a B plus to an A minus as well. Um, another great season from Rudy Gobert. Carl Anthony Towns. For Carl Anthony Towns, I am actually going to give him an A minus. I think Carl Anthony Towns, I, I commend players for at some point in their career knowing their roles and not trying to force it. And Carl Anthony Towns has embraced himself as the number two on this team. Full stop. Um, I also think he has made the proper adjustments in this game to play with a Rudy Gobert. He has embraced the fact that, yo, I am not a five on the offensive end. I am a four hybrid three, honestly. Um, and it's unfortunate that he got injured uh, later in the season. I would love to see um, 
Carl Anthony Towns come back soon in the playoffs, right? But yeah, Carl Anthony Towns giving you 22 and 8 on 50 40, damn near 90 splits from the four position is insane. 42% from three on five threes is absolutely insane. Um, and yeah, I just want to commend Carl Anthony Towns because did he pan out to be this generational prospect that, you know, we thought he was going to be this Giannis level prospect and B level prospect? No. Um, but you know, at some point you just got to realize who you are and do what's better for the team. And I think I've, Carl Anthony Towns has earned a lot of my respect uh, to that. And I think, I think that sacrifice from him, from a mentality standpoint, has been a big reason as to why the Timberwolves work the way that they do. So shout out to Cap. I'm going to give him a A-. minus. I feel like I've been handing out a lot of Bs and As so far. But, yo, a lot of a lot of motherfuckers have been having really good seasons, man. And I'm also talking about relative to their expectations, too. So um, moving on to the L.A. Clippers. Moving on to the L.A. Clippers. James Harden. Jamison Harden finishes the season with 17 points, 9 rebounds, 5 assists, 43, 38, 88 splits. I'm going to give Harden probably the lowest rating so far at a B- minus to a B. Still a good season. Like, a B- minus, hey, you got an 80 on a fucking test. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's that's still decent. Um, one of his healthiest seasons in recent memory. Um... Yeah, he played 58, 65, 44. Uh, he played the majority of this season. But, yeah, James Harden has had a relatively healthy year um, in a time span in his career where he is not the Iron Man that he was all the way up to 2020, to be honest with you, right? Um, I think he could have been more efficient from the field. I do think there are stretches this season where he just, listen, man, he, he played like Dookie. You know, he he could have he could have played better. Specifically, those first four games when he came along, I think recently actually he's been on a slump. Yeah, if we if we look at these last five games, <laughs> James Harden, thirteen points, thirty three percent from the field, twenty eight percent from three. So, um, definitely a, a point in his career where he can be really really fucking streaky. If I even extend it out to the last ten games, it really doesn't get any better, right? Thirty-five percent, twenty-four percent from three. So James Harden is on a crazy, crazy slump right now to end the season. Um, I think this is a this is a team that relies on James Harden's playmaking, and a part of that is his scoring. A part of that is his shooting. Um, and I think he could have been a better scorer this season. I think he could have been a more consistent scorer this season. Um, has he changed the makeup of the, uh, of this team? Has he been the uh, floor general that this team has low key needed in this Clipper era? I feel like for the most part he has, um, but still could have been better. So I'm, I'm gonna give him a B minus. No shame in that. No shame in a B minus season from a 34 year old, <laughs> right? Um, next up, Kawhi Leonard. Kawhi Leonard ends up with 24.6 rebounds, four assists, um, 53, 42, 89 splits. Really close to 50, 40, 90. And quite honestly, being three points above 50, being two points above three, and only being one and a half percent above 90, that should be considered just as impressive. On this volume two, nevertheless, um, also one of his healthiest seasons since probably 2017, right? If I remember correctly. Yeah, nine games here, 60 games here, uh, missed 15, missed 20. And I think he got injured in the playoffs in 21. Did not hurt his ACL, missed all of 22, missed 30 games last season. So him playing 60, effectively 70 games a season, um, that's big for Kawhi Leonard. That's big for Kawhi Leonard. Um, I also think, quite honest with you, at the beginning of the season, I was questioning who the fuck was the true best player on this team between him and Paul George. Um, but there were stretches in, in, in this season where Kawhi Leonard looked dominant as fuck. He looked like a top five player in the league. Um, and was a big, like, I, I remember when the Clippers won that crazy winning streak. I was looking at Kawhi's numbers. I'm like, yo, I think we forgot about this motherfucker. Dog. Like, we forgot about how good Kawhi Leonard was, bro. Um, I'm going to give Kawhi Leonard a B to a B plus. B to a B plus. Um... Yeah, Kawhi, Kawhi Leonard has done his job. He's, he's, he's done his job. Is it the 27 to 29 points that we hope from a top 
five caliber player in the league, probably not. But nevertheless, he's still one of the um, better scorers in the league. I think he's been a better playmaker. He's still one of the better defenders in the league. And he shot 50, 40, 90 and played healthy this, uh, and, and was healthy this season. Not much more you can ask from Kawhi Leonard. Next up, we got Paul George. Next up, we got Paul George. And I want to shout out Paul George for being the glue of this team. I feel like Paul George is a, a, a bigger part in Clipper culture and what makes the Clippers the Clippers than anyone else, in my opinion. Along with Russell Westbrook, I think um, he has been the most consistent player this season. The uh, the less downs out of at, at all, all the stars on the Clippers, out of the their big four, arguably just big three, right? Um, 23 points, five rebounds, four assists, 47% from the field, 41% from three, and 91% from the line. Also really close to a 50-40-90 season, bro. Um, yeah, man, just, just really solid season. And I think Paul George is another one of those dudes that is having one of the healthiest seasons in recent memory. Yeah, Paul George, 48, 54, 31, 56, 73 games this season, bro. Um, yeah, man, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna give Paul George a B to a B plus, you know, I, I, this is a team where I'm not expecting too much crazy volume from one particular player. Um, there's so many moving parts to this team. Um, I think this is a team that realizes how important depth is. So allowing Norman Powell to get 10 shots up a game um, to get his 14. Allowing Russell Westbrook to get 10 shots off the off the bench so he can get his 11. I think that's that's all a part of this process. Even a guy like Taron Mann and a, a Zubak getting 6 to 7 shots a game. You know what I'm saying? So just a lot of players buying into the Clippers system. And for the most part, it has worked out. Now, they do have to face that man, Luka. Not even that man, Luka. That team, Dallas, in the first round. So, best of luck to y'all, man. But, yeah, those are the grades. I'm, I'm going to give the, the Clippers big three. And shout out to Russell Westbrook as well. Um, he's not a star, so I'm not about to grade him. But let's go ahead and move on to Dallas. Luka Doncic, A+. Plus. One of the greatest seasons I've ever seen from an individual standpoint. Um, I wouldn't be mad at you, to be honest, at this point. Y Jokic is still my MVP. But um, if you walked up to me and said, yo, um, my MVP is this dude averaging 34, 10, and 9, um, and is also like the five seed in the Western Conference, led his team to 50 wins, uh, yeah, that's my MVP. I'm not about to yell at you. I'm not about to, oh, wait a minute, you're a casual. Nah, I mean, on top of 49, 38, 79 splits, Luka is that guy. Luka, Luka Doncic is that guy. Don't get him mistaken. So, shout out to Big Luca. I'm going to give him A+. Plus. Kyrie Irving. Kyrie Irving. A lot of, yo, what does Kyrie need to do to get 50, bro? I need Kyrie to get his flowers, man. I need Kyrie to get his flowers. Um, I'm not going to give Kyrie an A+, plus just because he hasn't been healthy, and that is a part of your season. You know, if you, if you, if you had an injury-riddled season, you can't, can't say you had the best season of your life. You know what I'm saying? The, regardless of how good your numbers are. Um, so, I'm going to give Kyrie an A-. I'm going to give Kyrie an A to an A-. minus. Um, I'll talk about it in another video that will go up in the next couple of days. But I truly think Kyrie has been one of the more underrated players in the league this season. Um, he has been the secondary star that we've been asking Luka to have um, in this Luka era. Jalen Brunson came close. It not even came close. He was that that stretch where they went to the Western Conference Finals. But um, that Jalen Brunson versus this Kyrie, I think this Kyrie comfortably, comfortably clears. And that if we want to talk about current JB versus current Kyrie, that's a whole different conversation. But before... Dallas Jalen Brunson versus this Kyrie, this Kyrie clears. Um, just a more explosive scorer. Um, I would even argue a more consistent scorer. I don't have JB's numbers off the top of my head. Um, I think he plays a little bit better off ball Kyrie, right? Um, and definitely more experience. More experience. He's a he's a former champion. You cannot take that away from him. He has been a part of deep playoff runs. He knows how to operate within 
um, high expectation situations. And just a season where Kyrie just put his head down and played fucking basketball. And it turned out for the best. This is the season that a lot of y'all have been asking from Kyrie. This is the drama-free season that I've been wanting from Kyrie. Because I feel like with, with all the things he was talking about, not to say that they were unjust, not to say that they he wasn't within reason, not to tell him to shut up and dribble and all of that. But I just wish for one season all that drama went away and we focus on how good of a player, how good of a basketball player, how impactful of a basketball player Kyrie Irving could be. And he did that this season, man. So shout out to Kyrie. I'm going to give him an A- minus to an A. Um, they, those are really the only two stars on his team. Uh, shout out, shout out to uh, Daniel Gafford. Shout out to a uh, PJ Washington, to Mardaway Jr. This is a this is a talented team. Um, Daniel Gafford shooting seventy eight percent for them. <laughs> that's, that's crazy. Nevertheless, let's go to move on to the New Orleans Pelicans. Starting off with Zion Williamson. Well, starting off with Brandon Ingram. Start off with Brandon Ingram. Um, I don't know when Brandon Ingram is coming back. Hopefully, he comes back soon enough. But I'm gonna give Brandon Ingram a B to a B plus. Um. Again, when you look at the makeup of this team, uh, do not expect high volumes from really any singular player because of the you know the shot spread. A lot of people are a lot of players are getting the shots. Trey Murphy needs his eleven. Herb Jones needs his eight. Zion needs his fifteen. CJ needs his sixteen. You know what I'm saying? So, um, and Brandon Ingram needs his sixteen. But I think Brandon Ingram has honestly become one of, if not the best passing wing in the league. He's still one of the uh, better shot creators in the league. I think defensively, he provides a lot of length. Um, you know, I, I I I'm not afraid of putting Brandon Ingram on on a you know offensively talented wing. I'm not hiding Brandon Ingram on defense. Long story short, um, and you know the the Pelicans definitely won. So all of this is translated to winning basketball. So I'm gonna give Brandon Ingram a B to a B plus. Um, CJ. Just real quick, I'm going to give CJ, same thing, B- minus to a B. Um, he has become one of the more underrated players in the league, in my opinion. Um, one of the more overlooked. Honestly, this whole team has just been overlooked for some reason. I think, I, I don't know, we'll, we'll, we'll get into that at some point. But this whole team has just been overlooked throughout the whole season. Um, but yeah, CJ McCollum at age 32, still giving you 25-4. and four. On really good efficiency from the field, dog. Like, CJ has been one of the more underrated players throughout his career. Uh, one of the best players without an all-star appearance. So, shout out to CJ. Um, Zion. Zion. I am going to give him an A-. minus. I'm going to give him an A-. minus. Um, Zion has had the healthiest season of his career so far. Full stop. Um, he has already played more than the 2021 season. He's on pace to play 70 games this season. Um, you know, coming into the season, he did look out of shape, but throughout the season, he did get into proper shape. Um, and I believe he is just truly off of minutes restrictions at this point. This is just the, the minutes rotation of the team, naturally. You know, one of the things that annoy me about injuries is the fact that when you get injured, you spend a lot of rehab trying to get back to your former shape. And we don't even spend enough time about, or the player doesn't even spend enough time trying to improve their game. They're just, like the 2011 D-Rose, all of the rehab was just trying to get back to 2011 D-Rose uh, for the next couple of years. Instead of trying to improve their game from that point on, which is very unfortunate, not to blame the player. But Zion has somehow found a way to not only rehab to four more Zion levels, but he has also just genuinely improved his game. If you have watched um, the Pelicans, Zion has been taking up the ball a lot. He has been playmaking for the um, he has been playmaking for the Pelicans, which is something that I did not expect from Zion Williamson um, in year five, year four, to be honest with you, um, with the uh, amount of games that he's played specifically, right? Um, just something I did not expect from him, uh, and something that he's added to his game to make him more effective. You know, like Zion just came into the league as a bully ball player. Just hey, I'm 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 out physical you. Um, I I I am a more physical player than you. I'm gonna be stronger than you. I'm gonna out jump you. I am a lob threat. I am automatic at the rim. Um, and if you foul me, I can shoot decent from the line, decent enough from the line. Like that was Zion's game. But if you watch Zion this season, Zion got skill. 
Zion, <laughs> Zion can operate from the perimeter. Not on some Brandon Ingram shit. He's not about to sauce you up. He's not about to play make at an extremely high level. But, yeah, Zion is an extremely effective player from the perimeter. So I am actually going to give Big Z, the biggest Z, an A- minus to an A. He has impressed me a lot this season. Shout out to Zion. I may be back on a Zion train, for real, for real. Um, next up, we got the Phoenix Suns. We got the Phoenix Suns. Um, starting off with Kevin Durant. I, I feel like I keep on just giving these out willy dilly, um, uh, willy dilly, willy nilly. Um, I'm gonna give, I'm gonna give KD a A minus, man. I'm gonna give KD a A minus to an A. Um, I understand he's playing with a D book. I understand he's playing with a Bradley Beal, but I think people at the end of the day, expectations all aside, I think people have underestimate, uh, underestimated how much KD is at the backpack, this team. Um, on both sides of the court. Offensively, he is still arguably their most important offensive weapon. Um, you can argue because Devin Booker does handle playmaking and point guard responsibilities a lot. That that may actually be D-Book. Um, but still, that go-to score, go-to bucket, um, you know what I'm saying? Pick and pop threat, post-up threat. Hell, even lob threat in some cases, right? Like, KD is, is an extremely valuable offensive weapon to this team. And he has done just that, right? 27 points. That's really good volume. Um, five assists. So he's giving you playmaking as well from the perimeter. Um, not to say that assists is just just playmaking, right? But y'all know what I mean, bro. Watch the fucking games. Uh, shooting 52, 41, 85% from, from the field, dog. Like, KD, KD is having a KD offensive season. Um, that, that does not change defensively as well. I want to say 2017 levels of Kevin Durant, but going into the season, it's a crazy ass from KD, but KD was asked to be one of the anchors of this team defensively along with Yusuf Nurkic. Crazy ask from Yusuf Nurkic, who, Hey, he ended up playing 74 games a season, but he was not, <laughs> He was not a uh he, he was an injury prone player going into the season. I, I'm gonna keep it a stack. So Yusuf Nurkic being the healthiest player on this team. Shout out to Yusuf Nurkic. Kevin Durant also being one of the healthiest players on this team. Shout out to KD because KD has been injury prone as of late as well. So off off of that strength alone, like I'm gonna give KD an A minus to an A. Devin Booker. Devin Booker. 27, 7, and 5 on really good efficiency from the field. Like I said previously, he has had to mantle a lot of the playmaking duties of this team because they don't have a point guard, so he can't just focus on scoring. But even still, he still averages the same amount of points as one Kevin Durant, right? Uh, with a with like playing one less minute a game, giving you seven assists as well. Um, I'm gonna give I'm gonna give D book a B plus, B plus to an A minus, maybe even an A. He's had a really good season, dog. I'm not gonna lie. Not much you can ask from D book. Um, I guess he could have been healthier, so I'm I'm a dock some points there, but not not too much as well, man. D D book is D book, D book is D book. Um, and then Bradley Beal. I'm gonna give Bradley Beal a C plus to a B minus, uh, predominantly because of the fact that he hasn't been healthy this season. And again, that doesn't take away from the skill of a Bradley Beal, but. Yeah, man, this this team needed him healthy, and he wasn't healthy. And again, I cannot say that your best season is a season where you were injured, uh, where 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 you were injured a lot, and you missed thirty games, um, in the fifty games that he did play. Which honestly, it felt like he played less than fifty games, but it is what it is. Um, eighteen points, five assists, four rebounds, 50, 40, 81 splits. Um, maybe this is crazy for me, but I'm honestly expecting a little bit more volume from Bradley Beal. Um, listen, they, they need as much offensive threats, offensive weapons as they can. And Bradley Beal, in my opinion, needs to be shooting more. Is that a coaching issue? Maybe, probably. But yeah, if you, it, it, the times I've watched the Suns, Bradley Beal clearly has lost a step, um, which is fine. He's 30 years old. He's been banged up over the last couple of years. It is what it is. But yeah, I think, um, when this team's whole offensive scheme is to outscore you because of the offensive weapons of KD, D-Book, and Bradley Beal leading the way. 
I think if there's one offensive weapon lagging behind that that torch, like this was supposed to be a 2021 Nets revive type thing. Um, Bradley Beal's the one lacking. So I'm gonna give I'm gonna give Bradley Beal a C plus or a B minus. Um, moving on, moving on to the Sacramento Kings, De'Aaron Fox, De'Aaron Fox, twenty seven point six assists, five rebounds, not as much hype as he had last season, man. And let me check the numbers because I feel like it was better last season, honestly. Um, yeah, De'Aaron Fox, his field goal percentage did go down by fifty percent. Uh, not 50 is crazy. Uh, 5% roughly. Actually, exactly 5%. I am tripping. Um, his three-point percentage has gone up, though, by roughly 4 to 5%. But his free throw percentage has gone down by 5%. So let me look at his true shooting. I believe his true shooting has actually gone down. Just straight up. So his true shooting has gone down from 60 to 56%. So less efficient scoring season from De'Aaron Fox this season. I don't think he's improved as a playmaker, in my opinion. Um, has he improved defensively? I I believe so. He's doubled his steals per game, so he's playing the passing uh, passing lanes better this season as well, from what I've seen. Uh, he's definitely a better three point shooter this season, but um, I don't know. I, I was just expecting one. I I wasn't expecting a leap in three point percentages this season, but I expected a more explosive season, an improvement from from. Last season's passing ability, maybe like a twenty-five and eight season from De'Aaron. Um, I forgot who made that argument, but someone said like De'Aaron taking as many threes as he had uh, as he's taking this season, specifically off the dribble, has kind of like hindered this team's offense. Um, and again, maybe that's a coaching issue, but I'm gonna give De'Aaron Fox a B minus to a B. I'm gonna give B a B minus to a B. I think there was room for improvement. Um, you can make a case that he got a little bit worse this season. He's not as effective as he was last season, but still an extremely effective player. I don't want to take that away from him. You know, 26 is 27, 26 to 27 points a game on still relatively good efficiency is, is that. So I don't want to take that away from him, but can't say he had the best season of his life. I would argue he had a better season last season. Um, so yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to give De'Aaron a B minus. I'm going to give De'Aaron a B minus. DeMontis Sabonis. I am actually gonna give Demontis Sabonis an A minus to yeah I'm gonna give I'm gonna give him an A minus I'm gonna give him an A minus. Um, the weaknesses that he had last season are still there, but he's definitely upped his production to the point where I am genuinely questioning who is the best player on this team. I think last season it was clear to me that it was De'Aaron's team and Sabonis was right behind him as a number two, but this season I think Sabonis has arguably been the more important player. Arguably, I think um, he's been a better passer this season. Uh, just as good of a scorer as last season. He's been a better rebounder um, by a pretty decent margin, too. Already led the league in rebounds last season, but to go up by two even more, that's kind of impressive. Kind of. Not not kind of. That is impressive. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to give De'Aaron a... Uh, not De'Aaron. I'm going to give DeMontis a bonus an A-minus season. Um, Sacramento Kings as a whole, they could have been better. So, that's a whole different... You know, that's a whole different topic point for a whole different video. But DeMontis Sabonis has, has been good this season. I, I can't lie. Um, moving on to the Los Angeles Lakers. Anthony Demodome Davis. Anthony Demodome Davis. I'm going to give Anthony Davis an A- minus to an A. I think um, I, learned, I learned this past week that all NBA teams are actually positionless this year. And I heard... I forgot who was talking about it, but I think in the discussion of the first team All NBA discussion, bro, I think Anthony Davis has left off this, those discussions a little bit too much. Um, I think he's putting up MVP caliber numbers. It's just the other guys are just putting up crazy numbers. But Anthony Davis, for an impressive already career, is having one of his more impressive seasons, arguably his most impressive season. Um, number one, a health. Number one health. Shout out to the stars this year. Uh, is that just because of the 65 game rule? Maybe, possibly. I don't know. But a lot of stars have been healthy this season. And for a dude who's been labeled as Mr. Street Clothes to have the healthiest season of his career since his rookie season, maybe just period. Yeah, period. 
As long as he plays two more games, period. Regardless. Arguably his healthiest. That's big time. For him to anchor this de- uh, this team defensively is big time. Giving you 25 points on top of that, along with calm 3-4 assists a game, is big time. This is the Anthony Edwards, uh, Anthony Edwards. This is the Anthony Davis I've been waiting for, for the Los Angeles Lakers. Um, and yeah, man, Anthony Davis has been killing it this season. I want to give him some props. Next up, we got LeBron, man. LeBron, 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 my glorious king. I feel like I've said the, the letter A so many times this video, but how can you not give him that A minus to an A? You're 39, oldest player in the league. Oldest player in the league. Play 69 games. One of, uh, again, uh, a reoccurring theme for this video. One of his healthier seasons in recent memory. 26, 8, and 7. Shooting 54% from the field. 41% from three. This is LeBron James' best three-point shooting season. By far, I believe. By far. Relative to volume... He's at, he's at in 2022, he's chucking up eight threes a game, uh, shooting 36%, which, which, which is good for that volume, at least for LeBron. Um, he was even shooting 37 right here on six threes. But 41% on five, that this is probably his best three-point shooting season. I, I, I can't lie. Um, also might be his best free throw shooting season. Hold on. This might be his best free throw shooting season. Wait, am I looking at the wrong numbers or right numbers? Oh, no, 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 no. I thought I was looking at the 81. Nah, okay. 75% is right around LeBron numbers. But for for his age to be as effective as he is, to even argue that already one of the greatest players of all time is having a career year in any aspect is crazy. And I think defensively, obviously, he's not DPOY LeBron anymore, um, but still a plus defender in my opinion. Picks his spots. Uh, and when he does pick his spots, he's still a very effective player. I'm going to give LeBron, LeBron an A- minus to an A, man. Is that dick suck? It is what it is. Moving on to the Golden State Warriors. Let's keep it a stack. They only have one star, and that is Steph Curry. And um, shout out to Steph Curry. In my opinion, the numbers reduction this season more so has to do with his role than his actual skill. But nevertheless, let's keep it a stack. This is one of the least impressive Steph Curry seasons since he's become an MVP caliber player. While he's healthy. You know, obviously, you look at 2020, he was asking these fucking five games, right? Um, but yeah, a career low in field goal percentage since his rookie season. Uh, well, not rookie season. Since, since his 2013 come out party season. Uh, from three, I mean, Steph Curry. Steph Curry, Steph Curry from three. 40% is 40%. Can't really take that away from him. From the free throw line, 92%. That's, that's Steph Curry levels. Um, but playmaking, I feel like he, he's played more of a shooting guard role this season, so I can't really dock him for that too much. Um, but let's just keep it a stack. For Steph Curry standards, this has not been the most Steph Curry level season. Uh, we've seen him carry bad teams before, specifically in 2021 and arguably 2022, but specifically in 2021. <laughs> And he just did not do that this season, which is fine. <laughs> Steph Curry is thirty-five, um, so I'm gonna I'm give Steph. I'm gonna give Steph a B this season, man. A lot of a lot of the ratings I'm giving out, chat. I need y'all to understand are relative to that player's expectation and their standards. So if I say Steph Curry had a B season, and let's say Zion had an A minus season, am I saying Zion is better than Steph or Chet is better than Steph? No, but relative to what. We're used to from them, what they're supposed to be and all of that. Steph Curry has not had a Steph Curry-like season. At least the ones that we're used to. Going to the Houston Rockets. To me, their only bona fide star right now that I really want to talk about is Sangoon. And for Sangoon, I'm gonna give uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give some Goon a, a A minus to a B plus. Um, I think out of their young core, he's established himself the most as one the most productive player right now and number two as a building block of the future when you when you got a guy giving you capable of giving you 21 10 and 5 on good efficiency come on bro you build around that dude period point blank period point blank like he's really living up to those baby Jokic um standards and 
that's a that's a great that's a great thing to be. A baby Jokic, that's a great thing to be. Okay. Um moving on to the Utah Jazz. Laurie Markinen is their only star, and I'm gonna give Laurie I'm gonna give Laurie a B minus to a B dog. I understand. I'm I'm looking at the efficiency right now, and I have underestimated Laurie's efficiency because this is pretty close to 50, 40, 90 on 23 points and 8 rebounds. Like, Laurie's had a good season. You know what I'm saying? Um, Just in terms of impact on winning, though, they haven't won. I I understand he's on a bad team, so it is what it is, but I don't want to spend too much time on Laurie marketing. B minus. B minus B. Good season from Laurie, Okay. Um, moving on to the Memphis Grizzlies, John Morant is their only star, and I'm gonna give John a D minus to an F. Um, number one, let's keep it a stack. His shenanigans from the prior season has wasted a season from not only John Morant's career but the Memphis Grizzlies. Let's just keep it a stack. Specifically in this Western Conference, they were they had to fight back from behind behind, um, and then when he came back, he got injured again, was sidelined for the rest of the season. The Memphis Grizzlies just tanked, and um, yeah, I'm, let's keep it a stack. That domino started with John Morant being suspended for 30 games. That wasted a whole season for the Memphis Grizzlies. So I'm going to give John Morant an F for this season, dog. Um, wishing the best for him. Still one of my favorite players in the league, but let's keep it a stack. He wasted a season of his career and the team's, the t- the team's uh, career, I guess, this season. Portland Trailblazers, honestly, there is no star on this team. If there is one, Anthony Simons or Shaden Sharp, but Anthony Simons missed damn near half the season. I don't I don't even want to spend time on them. San Antonio Spurs, I'm gonna go Vic. A plus. <laughs> right. When you arguably have the greatest rookie season of all time, especially in not especially, but particularly in recent memory, gotta be an A plus. Shout out to Mr. Vic. Let's go to the bottom of the Eastern Conference. Snake this. Uh, the only star that the Detroit Pistons have is is Cade. And I'm going to give Cade a B. I'm going to give Cade a B. Um, I think he's doing his best with what he got, to be honest with you. Um, you know, <laughs> not not he can only be so efficient with not much floor spacing in today's NBA. You know what I'm saying? You can only play make so much when you don't have as much play finishers. Um, Kate is trying his best. I ain't going to lie. Uh, could he have been better this season? Could he have uh, been more efficient, I guess? Um, could he have averaged less turnovers? Because I do believe for a big portion of the season, Kate did have a turnover problem. Yes. But from a 22-year-old... Um, I don't even know if he... I, the The one thing that is a little bit concerning to me about Cade is just questioning exactly how to play Cade. Is he a big point guard that, you know, you should play like a Luka? Or let's keep it a stack. Is he more so like a Jason Tatum or a Jalen Brown where he should probably be utilized as a wing player alongside a primary playmaker than playing him as a big point guard? I don't know. I don't know. So we'll we'll find that out about um the Detroit Pistons. The Washington Wizards have no stars. We're moving on. The Charlotte Hornets, LaMelo. I already know LaMelo stats off the top of my head. Might as well show y'all since I'm here. Not trying to be lazy. But um yeah, LaMelo Ball only played 22 games a season. I'm going to give LaMelo Ball a D minus to a D. Um again, not not too much on his production. Even his production, I mean, I can only give you so much credit for 43% shooting from the field. Um, most of it has to do with just an injury riddled season, so it's a bad season for LaMelo. Um, the only shining light for the Charlotte Hornets is Brandon Miller this season. Um, and, and, and Trey Mann, actually. Let me give, let me give credit to Trey Mann. Um, but their star player playing uh, being injured and now showing a track record of being injured is definitely a bad season for LaMelo and honestly his future because now now it's like, okay, this is year four. Let, let's, I'm going I'm to I'm I'm throw some, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm going to look sideways. At the very least, I'm going to look sideways. Um, the Toronto Raptors, I'm, I guess I'm going to, 
Nah, he, he made All Star team this season. I, I can't I can't lie. Uh, Scotty Barnes for Scotty. I'm gonna give Scotty Barnes a A minus to a B plus season. Um, I was honestly skeptical of Scotty after a sophomore slump that he had. Um, as far as just being like a franchise cornerstone number one, um, and that is still a little bit in question with me. But I think, you know, production wise. Going up from 15 to 20, your assist going from 4 to 5 to 5 to 6, becoming a better rebounder and becoming a more efficient scorer. I think definitely put him in the right direction in terms of that conversation. Um, so, yeah, big Scotty in the building. I'm going to give him a B plus to an A minus. Um, the Brooklyn Nets, I'm going to go with Mikael Bridges as their star. And Mikael, Mikael had a B minus to a C plus. Mikael had a B minus to a C plus. I think the Brooklyn Nets, with how Mikael played after they got after they traded for him last season, there was this hope of, yo, we found a late bloomer. Yo, we found a diamond in the in in the rough. This could be a franchise cornerstone. We're talking about a dude who is um who doesn't miss much games, who's a two way scorer, elite defensively, while can give you twenty five to twenty six points on the other end efficiently. Like, I think, you know, when, when the rumors came out that the Brooklyn Nets rejected a trade offer from the Houston Rockets uh, for Jalen Green and a bunch of draft picks, and they rejected that because they're so high on McHale, I believe they rejected a couple more offers because of how they're high on McHale. I think um, partially a part of that is just, I think, Brooklyn overestimating how good McHale Bridges actually is. So I can only blame McHale so much. But partially a... Uh, Partially of that as well is just, hey, Mikael, we gave you the keys. What are you going to do with the keys? And he did not do much this season with those keys. So, yeah, I'm going to give Mikael a C plus to a B minus. Still a really good player, still a valuable player, but as a number one, I think he proved that he is not that guy this season. Um, For the Atlanta Hawks, I'm going to go Trey Young. Unfortunate that he wasn't really healthy this season. Uh, missed um uh, missed thirty games. I don't know when he's coming. Back. I, oh, actually, he just came back last night. So, but roughly missed around thirty games a season. Um, in my opinion, actually one of the more underrated players in the league, especially with how y'all were talking about Tyrese and the other Tyrese in the beginning of the season, just scoffing Trey Young out of those conversations. But yeah, um, from a production standpoint. Arguably his best passing season. Uh, from an efficiency standpoint, from a scoring standpoint, I would say just an average Trey Young season. A little bit above average because he typically doesn't shoot 38% from three. So a little bit better on that front. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to give Trey Young a B. B. B to a B minus for him. Um, just because of the injury stuff. And yeah. Going on to DeJounte Murray. Going on to DeJounte Murray. I'm going to give DeJounte Murray a B. I think relative to DeJounte's standards, he's actually been the glue of this team. I think he's actually been the culture setter of this team. Um, And I think he's honestly one of the more underrated players in the league. I think um, because of the fact that that the duo of Trey Young and DeJounte didn't dominate the way it was supposed to when it formed... People are down on DeJounte Murray as as a player. But I still do think, given in the right situation, he can still be a very, very effective defensive player. It's just when you ask him to backpack a team defensively, he's just not that guy. But if you put him on a good defensive team uh, with defensive pieces, I still think that, that the defensive identity that he used to have can come back. I think from a scoring standpoint, listen, I've seen it firsthand, but even for from the whole season, I mean, DeJounte Murray on a, any given night is capable of giving you 23-7 and seven on decent efficiency. Um, Yeah, I mean, DeJounte Murray is a good player to me, so I'm, I'm going to give DeJounte a B, man. I'm going to give DeJounte a B. And he plays 76 games, DeJounte is a B. Next up, we got the Chicago Bulls. Honestly, I am so mad with this team. I don't even, like, DeMar, individually, DeMar is like a B minus to a B. I'm going to just run through it. Zach Levine, D, you were injured throughout the whole season. 
Vucevic, if you're a star, C, I don't, I don't, a lot of wasted talent on this team, dog. Kobe White, for Kobe White, I'm going to give him an A- minus to an A. But it's a lot of wasted talent on this team, bro. The Miami Heat. The Miami Heat. Bam Adebayo. I'm just disappointed that Bam hasn't really shown any, like, significant improvement in this game. Because I feel like he could be better. I feel like there's a ro there's room for improvement there from a playmaking standpoint. There's room for improvement there from a scoring standpoint. That I don't think he's just been able to tap into. Like, this is year five of Bam being effective. Well, he went from 16 and 10 to, like, 19 and 10. So, I'm going to go year four of Bam being 19... Like, effectively being 20-10-4 and four, while being one of the best defensive players in the league, which is still really valuable. But I still feel like there there was, there's a, there's age room here for Bam to become a better player, to show skills that, you know, we thought, oh, Bam, Bam could do this. Um, but he just hasn't had. Um, so I'm going to give Bam a B-. minus. Still a really solid season for Bam, but um, I'm just wondering if there, if this is just Bam. Is there any more room for improvement for Bam? But I feel like there is. That's my thing. Like, I, I think he has the skills to be a more effective scorer. And maybe he's just playing within the system. You know what I'm saying? I mean, we, we all know Miami and how strict they are and how, you know, coordinated they are on, on winning basketball. So maybe he's just playing this part type shit, but... From an individual standpoint, I think Bam could still be better. Jimmy Butler, 21 points, 5 assists, 5 rebounds. Um, I want He's having his be one of his better shooting seasons from a percentage standpoint. But, hey, man, Jimmy, uh, this might come bite me in the ass. But, yeah, let, let Jimmy shoot still, in my opinion. I'm, I'm going to give Jimmy a C plus to a B minus. This is a Jimmy season. I don't I don't know. Jimmy has already said and come out and said that he's a playoff performer anyways, and he kind of coasts in the regular season. Um, and these are coasting-ass numbers. And if you're coasting at 21-5-5, five and five, I still think you're solid. But on top of the fact that you missed 20-plus games, I can't say you've had a great season. Uh, definitely not one of the best seasons, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to give Jimmy a C-plus to a B-minus. Um, moving on to the Philadelphia 76ers. For Tyrese Maxey, I'm going to give Tyrese Maxey an A. I'm going to give Tyrese Maxey an A. Come out party season for Tyrese Maxey. Um, I think when Joel Embiid went down, his numbers did go down like crazy because Tyrese Maxey was just not built, at least currently, to carry the load like that. And he still tried his best. Um, but especially going from his role last season to his role this season, to that load even being increased after Joellen went down. Like, there was a lot on Tyrese Maxey to produce. Um, but nevertheless, ends up the season averaging 26-6. and six, um, Established himself as a future cornerstone of the Philadelphia 76ers post Embiid, or even just with Embiid, period. Um, Tyrese Maxey, he's, he's become one of my favorite players in the league, for real, for real. So I'm going to give Tyrese Maxey an A- to an A. Um, also, a most improved player of the year candidate. So, there's that. Joel Embiid. Joel, I'm going to give Joel, just because of how dominant he is when he's healthy, I'm going to still give Joel a B-, minus, dog. I'm going to still, even though he's missed more than half the season, only played 38 games, just within those 38 games, he's put the 76ers so ahead of the curve that even though he's missed half of the season, they are still within playoff contention. Because when he was healthy, the, the Sixers were like a top two, three seed in the East. You know what I'm saying? Um, and also just from a production standpoint, again, I understand he missed more than like a lot of the season. But, yeah, I think MB would have ran away with the MVP if he played 70 to 75 games. If he was about to end the season averaging 35, 11, and 6 on, uh, while giving you two blocks a game, Shooting 53% from the field, 80, uh, 30, 38% from three, roughly 90% from the line. Like, yeah, I, I, I would have gave Joel a beat MVP, bruh. And he was winning. So, yeah, I'm going to give Joel a B minus, though, which is crazy for a guy who's about to end the season with 38 to 40 games. Moving on to the Indiana Pacers, Tyrese Halliburton. I'm going to still give Tyrese. Uh, a B plus to an A minus. 
if if this was pre playing tournament or pre in season tournament Tyrese, <laughs> this would have been a fucking A plus. But he's definitely slowed down. Um post all-star break primarily due to his injury so he is playing through an injury so i don't want to you know what i'm saying go on him too much but i do think he established himself as one of the better guards in the league he established himself as one of you know just just in that conversation within the trey youngs of the world within the jalen brunson's of the world within the Kyrie's of the world which i do think is big for him because kind of similar to uh Mikel last season when the the pacers traded him right well, that was that was two seasons ago, so may, maybe a different case. But you know, just just another season of Tyrese proving that yo, I am a franchise cornerstone, and this is my second year of averaging twenty twenty and ten on really good efficiency. I'm that guy for real. I am that guy. So yeah, I'm, I'm gonna give Tyrese a minus to a B plus. Uh, Siakam, I don't think he's been productive enough to consider a star. To be honest, I. I well, twenty one and eight is twenty one and eight. I'm gonna give Siakam a B to a B minus man. I think he could have been more impactful for the Pacers, but nevertheless, Orlando, Paolo Banchero. I'm gonna give I'm gonna give Paolo a A minus. I'm gonna give Paolo a A minus. Um, one of the more underrated players in the league. Doesn't get enough attention for a number one overall pick, especially in his second year in the um in the league. Is about to lead the Orlando Magic to like the two to three seed, right? I, I think the the standings in the East are close enough, yeah, to for for them to really slip like that. But like literally just two nights ago, <laughs> they were the three seed. But nevertheless, leading this team to a 47, 48 win season in year two, putting up twenty three seven and five, um, being solid defensively as well. Are these the, the craziest efficiency numbers? No. But, nah, bro. Pa- Paolo has been really good for this team. And I think he is having um, a, a very underrated season. So, yeah, I'm, I'm going pa- to give Paolo a B minus. Uh, I'm going to give Paolo a B plus to an A minus. Excuse me. And then um, outside of that, I'm going to give Franz B to a B plus. B to a B plus. Um, moving on to the Cleveland Cavaliers. Donovan Mitchell, Don, you still got to put respect on 26, 6, and 5 on decent splits. You still got to put respect on that. Um, But Don is about to miss 30 games this season. Um, And I think he... He slowed down. He slowed down like crazy. I, I know he's coming back from an injury, but he's been playing like shit. Like crazy shit. Over these last 10 games that he's played, bro. Like 18, 5, and 4. Not even shooting 40% from the field. Like these are these are bad numbers for Don. Um I'ma give Don a, a, a B minus to a B. Didn't I, I don't think he really improved on anything. He kind of stayed stagnant. Did he become a better passer? You can make that argument, but I'm not about to make that argument. Um Yeah, I just I'm doubting if Donovan Mitchell is really a number one. Like, for real, for real. And I think with what he's shown in the playoffs before, he's shown to be a dominant playoff performer before. But specifically from what I've seen from him in his last two playoff appearances um, and how he's been playing so far this season, I do think there is a gap being created between him, SJ, and Devin Booker. And Donovan Mitchell was coming in last when just last season, I would have put all those three in, in, in in the same tier, to be honest with you. So... Yeah, I'm gonna give Donovan Mitchell a B minus. Darius Garland, I'm gonna give Darius Garland a C to a C minus. Again, missed a lot of this season to uh to injury, right? Um, and just from a production standpoint, I don't know because when I've when I've seen them play, this might be a case of legitimately the Cavs operate better with either just one of Donovan Mitchell or Darius Garland, but nah, D D G. Like I just said previously in this video, was supposed to be in certain conversations. And from a production standpoint, he has slowed down. Um, yeah, he's just, he, he slowed down. He hasn't improved for a 22, 23, 24-year-old. I'm kind of disappointed in Darius Garland, to be honest with you. So I'm going to give Darius Garland a, a C plus to a B minus. And then Evan Mobley. 
Evan Mobley, again, this might be a case of just there's too many shots on this team, so he can't really get his shit off for real, for real. I was expecting Evan Mobley to be closer to a 20-point-per-game scorer by now. Maybe even a little bit more than that. Um, he's also been injured this season. So, yeah, this Cavs team has just been banged up for a majority of the season. I'm going to give Evan Mobley a C-plus to a B-minus. Maybe even closer to a C. I ain't going to lie. Moving on. We're on the home stretch here, fellas. The New York Knicks. Julius Randle. Julius Randle, I am going to give Julius Randle a B minus. I'm gonna give Julius actually, I'm gonna give Julius Randle a, a, a C plus, just off of the fact of, of of the injury tax, um, missing close to half of the season. Hey Amen. For for a team that's really important, for a player that's important to this team, that's that's tough as shit. Um, but yeah, when he was playing, I think Julius Randle is a really big part. To this team's defensive identity. I think offensively as well. When you're capable of giving 24 points and 5 assists. On still relatively good efficiency. I understand the Julius Randle stinker is one of the worst stinkers in the league. But nevertheless. Still one of the more important offensive figures in the league. Especially to one of the better teams in the league. Uh, we still got to respect that. So Julius Randle. I'm going to give you a B-. minus. And specifically with that New York team man. I think. Julius Randle was really the catalyst of what New York is right now. He was the one that embraced New York for what it was. Um, and then it is what it is right now. After Jalen Brunson came and, you know, after everyone came. But that started with Julius Randle. So I, I got to give Julius Randle some props, man. Um, Jalen Brunson. I think Jalen Brunson might be the first A-plus of a player who's not an MVP candidate. Yeah. I'm 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 a, I'm gonna go that far. <laughs> Jalen Brunson has changed the culture of New York Knicks basketball. He has also played roughly 74, 75 games a season. From a production standpoint, he's giving you 28 points, seven assists, four rebounds a night, on really good efficiency. Right, 48, uh, 48, 40, 85 splits. For a majority of the season, has not had his second best player, Julius Randle. They got they got rid of R.J. Baird and Emmanuel quickly, but then O.G. Ananobi, uh, for O.G. Ananobi, but then O.G. Ananobi went down. Uh, Mitchell Robinson, their uh, starting center, who is one of the best rebounders in the league, has only played 28 games. He has just came back. Um, but the main reason, the biggest reason, as to why this team is about to end the season with the second with a top four record in the Eastern Conference with a 51 season is because of Jalen Brunson and the carry job that he's had um, in the bright lights of New York. So I'm going to give Jalen Brunson an A+. Plus. Next up, next up, next up, we have the Milwaukee Bucks. Damian Lillard. I'm going to start off with Dame, man. Listen, Dame. Dame's a C. Dame's a C to a C+. Plus. Um... He has been healthy for this team, so I'll give him that. I think he has been a good passer for this team. I'll give him that. And, you know, offensively, he's he's still giving you 24 a night, so you got to respect that to some degree. But um, I expected a lot more from Dame this season. I expected one of the more, the most, actually, one of the most efficient shooting seasons, scoring seasons from Damian Lillard, given the offensive weapons that this team has. Um, I expected a playmaking improvement as well. Uh, from the passing department specifically with the offensive weapons that Dame got, especially with Giannis going into the season saying yeah, that, yo, this is Dame's team. We are going to give you the keys. And with those keys, you have really underperformed. And by the end of the season, Giannis had to take those keys back. I can't lie. Um, ending the season with 49 wins. Two seed is cool, but I truly think the separator between them winning 50 games this season and them winning the 60 games that they were projected to be, was Damian Lillard being more dominant. And he just wasn't that. He just was not that. So I'm going to give Dame a C to a C+. Plus. Giannis, got to give him an A+. Got to give him an A+. Plus. Another MVP caliber season from Giannis. Um, 30, 12, and 7. I didn't even realize he was averaging 6.5 assists. Sort of got last time I checked, it was like 5.7. But the best passing season of Giannis's career, like 
shooting 61% from the field and still being very valuable defensively. Like, chat, literally close your eyes, chat. And imagine LeBron. It, it, I tell you, LeBron is putting up 30, 12, and 7, shooting 60% from the field while being really important defensively as well. Maybe not DPOY level, but a plus defender, a plus plus defender um, in the league. That's an MVP for a lot of y'all. <laughs> but because it's not LeBron James and it's Giannis Antetokounmpo, you know, it's, it just rings a little bit different. You know what I'm saying? Getting to the line 11 times too. Giannis, shout out to Giannis, man. I think this is a guy that we've taken for granted for a couple years now. But Giannis is a one-of-a-kind player, bro. Giannis is a one-of-a-kind player. Moving on to the Boston Celtics. My Boston Celtics, last but not least, <laughs> type shit. Jason Tatum. I'm going to give Jason Tatum a B. I think um, he's actually having a relatively similar season to Anthony Edwards. In terms of, I think he's doing what's needed to win regular season games. Um, and he's still putting up good enough numbers to acknowledge the fact that he's having a great season, right? You know, 27 points, 8 rebounds, 5 assists, being a plus defender. Played 73 games. The second, third healthiest player on this team, right? 47% is still not a bad field goal percentage. 38% is honestly better than I thought he was going to end the season with. But 38% is still not a bad 3-point percentage. 83% is still not bad, uh, a bad free throw percentage. And obviously the team won 62. They might win end the season with 64 wins. But I still think with the offensive weapons that this team got, I don't even need Jason Taylor to take more shots. My thing is, is just with these shots, make more of them. Become more efficient. Because when I watch Jason Tatum play, he is getting a lot of open looks that he just flat out misses. Um, he is taking a lot of difficult shots that he does not have to take. And I feel like personally with the right shot diet, with a more efficient shot diet, with a more optimal shot diet, we would probably looking at Jason Tatum with the same amount of shots, averaging closer to 50% from the field, maybe 50, 52 Shooting, I, I think the 38 stays around there, 38 to 39% from the field. And the free throw line, I mean, they're free. I've seen Jason Tatum shoot, what, 86% from the line before? Yeah, 86, 87, 85. This should just flat out be better. I don't know. This should just flat out be better, right? And with that, the, the up in efficiency with the same amount of shots, the volume is, should just go up. So if Jason Tatum ended this season... With 30 to 31 points, 5 to 6 assists, 8 rebounds, being the defender that he was. But then we're looking at these um, percentages at 52, 39, 87. That is an MVP candidate to me, in my opinion. That is actually enough for Jason Taylor to win the MVP award. But he just didn't do that. He just didn't do that. Um, regardless though, I do think this is a season that at the end of the day will be defined by how good Jason Tatum is in the playoffs. No one gives a shit about the regular season when it comes to this team. It is all about the playoffs. So, but with JT, I'm going to give him a B to a B plus. He could have been better. He should have been better. Jalen Brown. I'm actually going to give Jalen Brown a higher grade than Jason Tatum this season. I was more impressed with what Jalen Brown was doing relative to his expectations than Jason Tatum. I'm going to give Jason Tatum a B plus. I'm going to give Jason Tatum a B plus. Uh, not Jason Tatum. Uh, Jalen Brown a B plus. I think um, he has he has reclaimed that defensive identity, that two-way moniker that he had a couple years ago back. If you've been watching the Celtics play, he has been really good for us defensively, um, taking on really important and, and hard defensive assignments. Um. I think he's having his most efficient season from effective field goal percentage wise since 2021, right? Um, what you call? I I also think he's been a better playmaker this season. And the lefty allegations, if you've been watching him play, understand, motherfuckers were trying to, you know what I'm saying, set him up in the in the in the beginning of the regular season with a couple clips, and maybe that was just hey, it still was a problem going into the season. But if you watched him closely. 
The memes won't go away, but I genuinely do think he has improved his left hand and has addressed that weakness. So I want to I wanna give a shout-out to Jalen Brown. Um, also, going back to Jason Tatum, bro, just be more clutch, dog. I ain't going to lie. I, I cannot defend you in the clutch, bro. You are so bad in clutch time situations this season. It's actually insane. Um, and the third star, I mean, you can argue there's four stars on this team, bro. <laughs> For Derek, De- Derek White, I'm going to give Derek White an A- minus to an A. I think um, in some ways he has been the glue to this team. He has been the most consistent player on this team. Um, and he has provided the uh, playmaking from the point guard position that this team definitely needed from him, a shot-creating ability from the point guard position that this team needed from him, while also being one of the best, if not the best, shot-blocking guard in the league. So, you know, shout-out Derek White. And then Chris Stops Porzingis. I'm going to give Chris Stops Porzingis a B plus. B plus. The only reason he's not in the A territory is because of how many games that he missed. Which I do feel like, honestly, chat, this wasn't even like he wasn't healthy. I think the Boston Celtics were genuinely being as conservative as they can with Chris Stops Porzingis injuries. They know how valuable he is. They know we need him for the playoffs. And they just load managed him as much as they could. But nevertheless, for the regular season, again, health tax. Um, but in terms of his importance to the team, I would still argue he's the second most important player on this team. I still believe the most important player to any team is their best player. But the second most important player on this team, and you can argue is the second best player on this team, to be honest with you, is Chris Stops Porzingis. Every time I've seen the Boston Celtics without Chris Stops Porzingis, their offense changes in the worst way possible. You get rid of isolation scoring from the mid post when Chris Stops Porzingis is out of the game. You get rid of a pick and pop threat when Chris Stops Porzingis is out of the game. Al Horford, for some reason, they don't want to run pick and pop as much with him, even in the games where Chris Stops is out. But it, it like when I when I watch the Celtics without Chris Stops, it literally just delegates to a five out system most of the time. It's just I truly think the only reason why it works for this team is because of the amount of shot creating and playmaking ability from the perimeter that this team has. That you can run five out with anyone because on the wings you got Tatum, Brown, Drew Holiday, and Derek White. Peyton Pritchard can create his own shot as well. And Sam Hauser is a is a spot up deadly ass shooter when he's in the game. And how Al, Al Horford can still stretch the floor, right? That's the only reason they can run a system like that. But the offense gets so stagnant. The offense becomes so three point reliant. We also lose a lob threat. When Kristaps Porzingis is not in the game. I genuinely think Kristaps Porzingis is the second most, uh, the, the second best player and the second most valuable player to this team. Um, but yeah, regardless, when he's healthy, he's been like an A minus to an A. When uh, but but with the injuries taken into account. And I also think he could have just been better from three a little bit too. Like <laughs> I think there's a stat out there that Chris Oswaldingas has the longest average three point range in the league, and I'm like, bro, take a step in a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes he be jacking it a little bit too much too. Um, yeah, I'm 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 I'm, I'm gonna give Chris Stops like a, a B B to a B plus. But with that being said, that is gonna close it for this video. Um, let me know what y'all think about these grades. I ain't gonna lie. By the end of the video, I was stuttering, stuttering a little bit because I had to go through all fucking 30 teams in one take, bruh. <laughs> so, apologize for any, any blunders, any mistakes in this video. Um, but I appreciate y'all for making it to the end. Um, like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know what y'all think. And I'm out, man. Peace.